everyone, I'm Diane Danzebrink and today we are going to be talking about menopause and work and I'm here with my lovely friend Mandy who is going to be helping us with what good practice should look like, answering lots of your questions etc etc. It's a Sunday morning so we both had a bit of a brain fog moment this morning when neither of us could really remember what we were doing or talking about indeed um but we do know now so i'm gonna let mandy introduce herself um some of you will know me from menopause support and the menopause support network etc um so yeah over to you lovely okay so my name is amanda baldwin i own a hr consultancy hr answers which is based in east anglia um had my own business since 2004 or 2006, <laughs> can't remember. Um, mm. And prior to that, I've worked as a HR director, HR manager, worked my way up through HR basically. For how many years? Oh, I just said this on the other <laughs> point, on the other vlog, 30 something plus years. So I'm feeling really quite old and delicate now. <laughs> so my, most of my working life is HR. Cool. And, and it's evolved. What sort of, give us an idea of the kind of diversity of organisations that you work with. I go from hairdressers, beauticians, herbalists, caravan retailers, um, car dealerships. And um, size wise, do you do accountants, solicitors, everything? vets? I go from one person plus an employee up to a thousand plus. Okay. So all sorts. Okay, all so sorts. plenty And I advise, there. we mainly do companies, but I do quite a bit as well with employees. Okay, So cool. both. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. All right, lovely. So um, part one of this vlog, if you're watching part two first, um, was very much about menopause and the law. Um, what your employer should be doing, what you as an employee should be able to expect, etc. Um, so if you're watching this bit second, um, you can go back and watch that. Um, and what we're going to do here is hopefully give you some sort of top tips to be able, if you're struggling, if you're feeling, I really need to talk to my employer about this and I don't know how to, um, or... I'm actually not feeling great and to be honest I know exactly what that feels like although mm -hmm. I did work for myself um, but I know what that feels like and a lot of the women that come onto the group um, say that they're really struggling and they don't really know how to start that conversation so hopefully we're going to give you some ideas of how to do that mm -hmm. so I thought what we do first is we've got a handful of questions from mm -hmm. the group mm -hmm. could we spin through those Yep, and, and wherever possible, I'm going to try and give you practical examples. So of stuff that in you've the first done. one we spoke about um, discrimination, and I gave an example of how we'd resolve that. So mm -hmm. I will, as far as I possibly can, give you examples of how we've helped employees, Brooke. companies as well. Okay, okay. so here we go. So mm -hmm. the first question is, I'd like to be able to talk to my male boss and explain the symptoms that affect my working life, but I don't want to be labelled. I feel that if HR get involved, I'll be treated differently and will be on a watch list. How do we get companies to understand and be empathetic without you ending up feeling more isolated? Mm -hmm. I understand that part of that is my own anxiety, but also understand that it's real. Okay. What would you say to that? First of all, I'm going to defend HR. Okay. Have to do that. <laughs> you know... HR are often in a really difficult position okay. and nine times out of ten, well a lot of the time they're always seen as the bad ones okay. and delivering bad news. Okay. But again, they need educating as well. So a lot of HR practitioners are not educated and no. they don't know how to deal with this either. And I would say the same for OH actually. Oh God, occupational health. Yeah. I've actually just referred someone to an occupational health practitioner um, and what I've got back, I think I could have done better myself. Yeah. You know, I, I think really, that they really definitely not great. also need educating about this. They do. They do. And it the end of the same guys that doctors yeah. and et cetera do. Yeah. So if you don't want to go to HR, I would say go to the most sensible person of the management team that you can find or your line manager. Okay. And organize a meeting. Say, I need to talk to you. I want to set aside half an hour. Now, 
if you're emotional and you think, oh God, I don't want to go on this on, on my own, say to them, and I'm going to bring a colleague or yeah. a friend, somebody you trust at work. And can you do that? Well, there's no guidance there, so why not? Okay. There's no guidelines, okay. there's no policy. So yet. the reason I asked her to do this is because she's very practical <laughs> and she's very down to earth. <laughs> And if you've watched anything or read anything that I've written, you'll know that I like that. <laughs> We're very practical. We like yes. practical and down to work. Yeah. And so this is the reason I asked Mandy. To so do. if I have an employee come to me and say, oh my God, you know, I've got these symptoms. I've, I'm too hot. I've got brain fog. I do this all the time. Actually, I get halfway through a sentence as we did this morning. Like, yeah. What are we talking what? about? So what I would say is arrange to meet your manager beforehand or the most sensible person because then they can take it to your manager mm -hmm. okay if you need to take someone in with you say would you mind if i take bring someone in just for support yeah but before you do do not go in guns a blazing prepare okay so plan what you're going to say so i'm a bit of a lister i can't help it list column these are my symptoms what do i want to get out of this what are we going to do so list your symptoms and issues so it could be hot flushes um I've, I've got a whole list here you know hot flushes um n having to fall one of the questions was by three o'clock i need to sleep yeah i'm just drained fatigue i'm fatigued Tired. what do i do yeah um my periods are really heavy i need to be nipping to the loo and if you've got to run through up three flights of stairs yeah you know what can you do Not helpful. i'm really hot things like that so list your symptoms um and if you list it, it's going to make you more composed and you are going to feel a bit more in control and it'll give you a bit more confidence. And you've got a reminder. Well. Yeah, and if you yeah. just suddenly think, what was I saying? Yeah. You can then pick it up. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I would say is list your symptoms, say how they affect you. So, for example, um, m one of my nurses giving meds, competent nurse, gone into the, me uh, into the menopause. Yeah. Oh my God. And she knew what she was doing, but it's just silly things like forgetting to sign something off, which is a real, it's actually a disciplinary offence okay. in some places, you know, yep. am I doing this right? These are my symptoms. And then what that does is that adds to your anxiety, doesn't it? And it just it? makes you, oh my God, have I done this? Have I done that? As if you're forever self-checking. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just making you more anxious. And it's yeah. exhausting. So these are my symptoms. This is how they affect me. And this is how they affect work. And then at the end, going with a solution. If you do this, this is how it will help you. So you're sort of, you're helping them with, yeah. rather than waiting for them to come up with something. Yeah, I don't think you should, I think you, you know, whatever, however you're feeling, you need to take a bit of responsibility for it. And sometimes yeah. you can't see the wood for the trees, but if you go in with even the daftest suggestion, then, you know, it is about educating. And we're mm. saying again is that if you go to your male boss and he has not got a clue about menopause, about menopause or what on earth you're talking about, if you go in with, this is what I actually think, this is how it's affecting the business, how it's affecting my performance, yep. which ultimately is your bottom line. Yep. This is what we can do. If you go in with something and he disagrees with it, it might give him something else. Yeah, you know, it gives you him know, something oh, to work we with. We could do this, we could do that, yeah. So this is a bit like, this is a bit like the um, guide that we've got on the website, which is having a symptom checker for you to take to your doctor. Well, why not take so the maybe in? so yeah. so we, yeah. they could maybe do that. Yeah. But I said earlier, what we'll do is we'll create this as a PDF that you can download from the website. These ideas that Mandy's going to give you. Yeah. So actually, I would maybe get the um, symptom, symptom checker. checker and go through it as part of your. This is how I'm preparing my table. This yeah. is what it how it affects work, etc. Go into the meeting. Give your manager a copy. I would say give them a copy when you get in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Don't give it before. Mm -hmm. And that way, if you get emotional or you forget what you're saying, you can always come back to it. And you've got some support. And you've got somebody with you. You don't have to have somebody with you, but it's just sometimes, sometimes it's just it's nice. nice. But I say that to loads of women going to the doctors. Yeah. If you're feeling really emotional and you're struggling with brain fog, take your symptom checker. Yeah. Take a list of what your periods are doing if you're yeah. still having them. Take somebody with you take a partner yeah. take a friend take a family member etc yeah. yeah um i was going to say something then and <laughs> see forgot now to... i've interrupted you and it's <laughs> see, gone straight what out of the window oh i have to write everything down yeah <laughs> sorry there you go. yeah so going um I, I, what i was going to say is that with grievance and disciplinary um they talk about companions and um if you look on the acas website 
um, usually a companion is a trade union rep or a work colleague and I would go with that because I think if you try and bring outside people in it's not helpful and it might put your employees back up so if you say you know especially can I bring, as a first course as a first course so you know I have had someone say well I want to bring my friend who's a solicitor no don't do that because you know what it'll just get their back up and we want a positive outcome for you so I think a work colleague or a trade union rep but again we're down to training some trade union reps yep. are great others some are like not so much really um you if know, you're a member of the TUC they their training's good um and I did I did a uh, I think it was half a dozen introductory videos for the TUC um, for their trade union reps. Um, and that you can find that on their intranet. Mm. So, and also, you can get your friend to take some notes as well. Mm -hmm. So, then go through the list. So, I think we've got various examples. So, someone was saying that they wanted to... I'll use the sleep one. So, mm -hmm. this lady gets to, gets to three o'clock and just thinks, oh my God, I want to sleep. So, I would say... You know, she can't concentrate, her productivity dives. And what you could say to yourself, you know, this is my issue. Can I possibly take 15 minutes from my lunch break? So if you get an hour, say, can I take 30 minutes? You know, so I have half an hour for lunch, 15-minute mm -hmm. break in the afternoon, 15-minute break in, in the uh, morning as well, yep. or just have the 15-minute break so I can just go have some fresh air, a coffee, a cigarette if you smoke, whatever. Just go take a break, do something that refreshes you. It might be that you go to the ladies and do a bit of yoga, mm -hmm. a bit of quiet, deep breathe, you know, yep. breathing exercises, something like that. I'll be back in 15 minutes and then my productivity will be better. Yeah. What do you think? And, you know, if they, if they want you to work... So you're being solution-focused, no. aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I think that... That's that is the, the technical phrase. Solution <laughs> focus. I must write that down and use that all next week. Yeah. Said the so, coach. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. So, and I think you make minutes, get a written agreement, and then you follow it up with an email. Thank you very much. It might be that your manager says, Ooh, I don't know. I've got to go and think about this. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Thank you very much for giving me your time. Um, can we meet again on X at this to come up with a solution? Yep. There we go. But also, then, does it not give... So, if that's your line manager, does that not then give them the opportunity not just to go away, but maybe to go away, A, and research, or B, to go and talk to a colleague who might know more? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. And also, organise a review date. Okay. Okay. So, then I thought, from that, let's think about reasonable adjustments. And I'll try and give you examples where we've brought it in in the workplace. Some of them are quite funny. <laughs> and some of them are just like, this is really common sense. What is the matter with you? So, yep. a desk. Hot flush is a desk fan. So, I have one of my clients, who is one of my longest standing clients, who is quite a character. Um, and we've talked about menopause. He's in his 40s, quite entrepreneurial. Not a clue. Didn't know what it was. His wife knew all about it, but there you go. Um, so now, so this is, would really help. So now every female employee has a desk fan to the point that he has now bought an air conditioning unit and it's just like Iceland in one of their departments because he thinks they're all of ladies of a certain age and they may be menopausal and he's trying to stop them but having hot has, flushes. But he has but he's, really tried to he's really learn tried about it, hasn't and he? taken it on board. And I have to <clears> say, of all the people... I didn't think he would. I thought he'd just say, oh, I'm not doing it. Get rid. Do this, do that. He's really taken it on board. And if he can do it, anybody can do it. He's really good. And of course, good. the other thing is, by him doing that, he's retaining those oh, yeah. valuable members of staff, yeah, isn't he? it is. And, you know, it, it takes... It, you and know, it's you, such a small thing. And you invest so much time in having good staff. You yeah. don't want them to leave because they feel unappreciated. Mm. You know, we have quite a low turnover there. But now we have a, you know, people that I think who in his business have quite a pressurised job. They now take a break. They have a break in the morning, a break in the afternoon. They have a desk fan. They have a, spe a, a lady's toilet, which before was a loo that the men and the ladies use. So mm. we've had one put in. All right, it's not ideal, but it's better. Mm. Um, they can need their products in the toilet it's mm. great and he's really embraced it and I've said, of them all you know his wife is now starting to go through the menopause and she did actually say he just thinks he's the king of it all and knows all about it and I could actually shoot him sometimes but there you go <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's great, great. That's that's great. he knows so much yeah. about it so um can you move your desk near an open window some of these I hate I hate not being able to have fresh air mm. and not being able to open my window yeah can you move or can you move your desk so you sit under the air conditioning Something like that. Something yep. simple. Yep. 
uniform get this all the time so a lot of like the the care home staff they and have the supermarkets and the supermarkets as well yeah it's that horrible man-made stuff yeah and oh my god it just makes you sweat before you even mm -hmm. have a hot flush doesn't it yeah so what i would say is go to them say can i have extra uniform they're not going to say no get your uniform a size bigger and this sounds really daft but then you can just get some of those cheap cotton tops and at least it absorbs it a bit if you're having a hot flush or something like that and it's not gonna it doesn't cost the company anything yeah i mean this is something that the nhs really need to look at because oh. a lot of the so many i mean i can't tell you how many nurses i've counseled oh, God, who've yeah. left the organization but um so many of the nurses and the healthcare assistants because they're dealing with people and all the time, so if they're really struggling with the vasomotor symptoms, the hot yeah. flushes, and they've got one uniform, Is that why? It's like, yeah. surely yeah. it would be a good idea to look at, okay, so what's the uniform made of? And mm. ha can you have two or three in a locker somewhere where even if it was just your top, because you of course change it. people yeah. feel embarrassed about leaning over patients or working with patients when they're, when they're having they're, a hot flush yeah exactly and it's not rocket science is it not really it is all common sense i have to say to be fair i've been doing some work with tesco yeah and they are just about to trial a new type of fabric Right. for their uniforms. I think they're going to trial it in 40 stores, Yeah, um, which is a brilliant, yeah. a brilliant idea. Personally, I hate that wick away stuff. You know, we're both horsey people, both ride. <laughs> so it's, and a lot of it is this wick away fabrics that's mm. supposed to take the sweat away from your body when you're riding. And I actually feel like I'm going to dehydrate at the end of it because it's just pulled everything out of right, me. Okay. I really don't like that. But if you've got just, say you have to just wear black, to work mm. and you've got a black uniform provided you can go to somewhere like primark or something like that and or tesco's mm. any of the supermarkets mm. and get a cheap black cotton shirt mm. and say can i do this you know this is an alternative so again you're providing yeah. an answer yeah give a solution yeah um relocating certain tasks brain fog so say we'll use i don't know whether we've used a nursing example Another one is, oh, cashing up. I've got a lady who is an accountant, well, accounts clerk or something, yep. has to cash up at the end of every okay. night. Important. I, should, I can't do it. Important job. <laughs> I've been doing it for 22 years. I can't do it. So, no, I'm the one that can't cash. No, no, I have lost the ability to cash up. <laughs> what do you mean? So when I get halfway through and then I just think, well, where was I? And what, what do I do? And then, of course, the idea of having to go back to the beginning. Stress, anxiety. Oh, no. And you start to lose your confidence. Yeah, oh my absolutely. God, I've done this and I can't do it. Absolutely. So with that, in the economies, I lose my thought halfway through. Yeah. Can somebody else do it? Allocate the job to somebody else. Yeah. If it's not possible, can I have a bit longer? Or if you have to cash up at night, could I come in a bit earlier and do it first thing in the morning when my brain's a bit clearer? Oh, okay. Something like that. Again, There's all sorts solutions. of different things. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, rest areas. And it's not always possible in a small to medium business to have I think, this. I think that's the issue, it's, isn't it? It's it in an ideal on the size of yeah. the organisation, doesn't it? Yeah. Is there somewhere quiet you could go? Even if you just need to take 10 minutes out and you haven't got a rest area, it could be that you just go sit in your car for 10 minutes, mm. walk around the outside, yeah. do something. Yeah, just taking um, that time. Really cake near the toilets, keep your sanitary products in the ladies, yeah. something like that. Um, access to water and cloakroom facilities. Can we talk about the water question? Yes, if I can find so it in this a, pile. There's a question about... This lady asked, is it law for companies to provide cold water, the key word being cold, cold, cold water for everyone? The taps here in our area run alongside the hot water pipes and the heating pipes, so they're always lukewarm. Should they be putting in water dispensers? And what's the answer? And I said, I have absolutely no idea, but I will investigate and reply, because I really didn't know. I've investigated. Yes, the duty is on the employer to provide drinking worker water at the workplace has to be readily available, free from co contamination, and preferably from the public water supply. So attack. Aye. Attack. Okay. Right. Bottled water dispensers are okay as a secondary supply. Has okay. to be accessible to all. Okay. 
adequate supplies, taking into account the temperature of the working environment. So I suppose if you work somewhere hot, like in a factory, yeah. you'd have more water points than yeah, if yeah, you're in yeah. an office. Yeah. Cups or drink cups should be provided or a drinking fountain. I don't like those because I don't like the thought of lots of people. Other drinking people on, being there. round, yeah. Not me. Um, it doesn't have to be marked as drinking water unless there's a risk of people drinking non-drinking water. So okay. I suppose you must have drinking water and you yeah okay not clean okay I don't know um there is nothing nothing about cold temperature it just says water, water. okay so okay. so I suppose in answer to that is that if they're providing water even though it's tepid unfortunately they, they are meeting their they're meeting the criteria <laughs> so maybe you take your own in I don't know freeze a couple of bottles the night before mm. put them in those sandwich yeah ice insulated yeah 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 doesn't say up. Oh, insulated isn't yeah, it yeah or you know the I mean. the water you know the the metal water you can see we're both drinking things i can't remember <laughs> what they're called yeah. if you put water in those yeah. and you put some ice, ice or in. you just put ice yeah. in it will defrost during the day yeah. yeah um but they're really good too yeah there was another question in here where a lady said that she has had it by like three o'clock. Um, okay. You know, she yeah. needs to take a break. So I'm going to say, you know, could you take 15 minutes off your lunch break? Go yeah, and, find and, and do that no oh, somewhere. But, you know, can you take something out your lunch hour? It's not always possible, but if they can do that, um, access to water and clothing facilities, if the shower facilities make use of them. Yeah. In our Obviously bill. not. Every not everybody has them. We're quite lucky have them. in the building where I am. There's lots of different businesses, but downstairs there's a gym with a shower. Okay. And I nip in and okay. use their shower. I don't know if they know I do that, but I do. <laughs> and if they're watching that, please don't stop me. There you go. So, um, insomnia. If you can't sleep, you have a bad night, and that's huge because it's for massive. so many. I mean, I know oh. you. I'm going to say it anyway. I know you've really struggled with yeah. it. Yeah. When Di stayed at my house, I'd been up at two o'clock, and she's like, "What are you doing? I'm working because I can't sleep." No, seriously, <laughs> I really can't sleep. Like we're both usually up at five, but two really. Yeah. So um, some days, I, I, before I, I went on my HRT, I um I if I got two three hours a night. Sleep. Yeah, you were I terrible. Was, oh, I was terrible. But I, think for I mean, year, it is massive it's for so many, and for so many, it's yeah. the first thing that happens is yeah. that sleep falls apart. Yeah. So, if you're working shifts, this won't always apply. Can you start later? So, for example, I've got a client in London. Um, two of their very senior managers were really not sleeping. Again, didn't realise it was it, it was perimenopausal symptoms. Yeah. So. We did the list, they went to see their manager, and they now start later. Because I found that I'd be up at two, doing three or four hours working at seven o'clock, I just wanted to go back under the quilt and sleep. Yeah. So, can you start later? Okay. Um, you could say, the solution, I could take time out of my lunch hour, I could work later in the evening, mm -hmm. all sorts. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible to work from home? Again, that's I, a tricky one, isn't it? Because it, is, it really depends not, on the organisation. It depends on the organisation and the relationship and what you do. And what you do. <laughs> um, I'm lucky, I'm self-employed, so I do work from home. But, you know, they might let you. It's worth an ask. Mm. If, if you are in the position where you've got a laptop and you could actually deliver the work from home, and it's not going... I mean, you couldn't do it on days you've got pre-booked meetings and no, things no, like no. that. But if you could do that, it's worth an ask, isn't it? Um and, you know, if you're not slept or you're feeling anxious or you're feeling grotty, yeah. that's a really good thing to do. Yeah. Had, I haven't put this on my list. And I've just remembered this one. Um, had a lady who was really struggling with anxious, anxious anxiety. Yeah. Getting on the tube. Oh. Oh, my God. So yeah. she had to be at work at half past eight, rush hour. In, I, I hate the tube. When it's hot, I could think of nothing worse, worse. than going on no, it last no, week. No. Um, so we approached her employer said this is what it is I mean she's getting to work and looked like she'd been swimming mm. anxious hot flushes yeah. horrendous so she now goes in for 10 o'clock but works later the other end okay because then she can get up in the morning she can go on the tube when it's not so busy yeah. it just takes that and also yeah. just reduces the anxiety yeah and her job wasn't you know yes she should do half a state to half a five but now she does but it wasn't reliant upon it wasn't reliant upon it yeah. so you know okay. it's a simple thing okay um if you get achy get up and move more tell your boss 
So if you suddenly start throwing a downward dog in the middle of the office, they'll want to know why. So, you know, just say, I am achy, I am stiff. I get really stiff now. My hands get really achy, mm. which sounds a bit daft. So even if you stand up and stretch, walk around, you can do that. But again, you can put that on your list. Um, I'm a bit achy, so I'm going to walk, make myself a coffee. Mm. I'm going to do this, that and the other. Um, fitness. And I've only come across this once, but I thought I'd throw it in there. Um, one of our clients are personal protection officers, so they provide effectively bodyguards, yep. female bodyguards, mm -hmm. uh, and they go all over the world protecting all sorts of people. Yep. Um, and they have to do a fitness assessment mm -hmm. every six months. And one every of, six months? Oh, yeah. Wow. They're quite, because they're quite high profile people yep. that they look after, yeah, yeah. they have to do this. Um, and one of them, I suppose this would apply to the police force. Yes. Army yeah, services fire as service, well, yeah, cetera. fire service, yeah. So she did not want to do because they get more together and they do this assessment. Yeah, it's the same for the men and the women. Okay, and she just said, I just can't do it. Why? You've passed it with flying colours. Mm. You never felt she. I just can't do it. Was and it's it just a lot of clear she can do it. A loss of confidence. confidence. Loss of confidence. So said, right. Okay. So, rung up the MDs. Right. Okay. This is what. What do I do? And he said, you know, we don't want to lose her. Is this with all my female? Not necessarily. Um, no, 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 but this is what we do. So actually, we then, he very then put in place that a female assessor would assess her. Okay. So they did the men's assessment, and so she didn't feel singled out. They got a few other ladies to yeah, do the assessment yeah, yeah. at the same time. Fine, done. It was just, you know, it was not rocket science, is it? No. Simple thing. No, simple so, yeah. thing. And they kept the, they yeah. kept the employee, mm. she kept her job, mm. everybody's happy. Yeah. You could... Ask occupational health if they can offer any advice, but as I said, not everybody's Only got if they're educated about And they're not course. educated, not everybody has no. it. Um, offer support. Um, some areas do free counselling, and I couldn't remember, and I will find it out. Um, in Wales, they've got it, and they can have six free sessions of counselling. From where? From um, you don't have to go through your doctor to it. The government provide it. Oh, and it's so you, only in so, you, so self refer. Self refer. And it's yeah. only in certain okay, areas. Okay, that's not here. We don't have it in Norfolk, but they do have it in Suffolk. They have it in Leicestershire as well, I think. Really? Yeah, and it's just this random thing, and I only found out about it by accident. But I will give you. Okay, so is thing. it government funded? It's government funded. It's free. And you get six okay, sessions. Okay, I can probably find that. And you too. don't have to go through your doctor. Okay. Um, you know, and if you're anxious, you could ask for you know somewhere quiet. To I know work. quite a lot of organisations have counselling lines yeah. and you know sort of that sort of thing or. They'll provide, uh, particularly really big organisations. Yeah, but will some again, that. some are better than others. Yeah, absolutely. And your counsellors have to be educated, and they're not always. Exactly, they also yeah. have to understand menopause. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and if, we're working on that. We're trying very hard. <laughs> yeah. If you're anxious, it may be that you need to take yourself out of the workplace. Can you go into a meeting room or a quiet place, or just away from others? And that's so, about knowing that quiet place is yeah, there. Yeah, and isn't just it? finding it. Yeah. yeah. So you know, often these are only temporary changes. But it can help while you're experiencing yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But Fabulous. I have to say is don't expect the onus to be on the employer to give up, you know, to give solutions. You give the solution driven or whatever you said, Di. You get much, solution focused. Solution focused. You'll get much <laughs> better results this way and you'll get them on board. And that's mainly because this could be the first time that anybody's raised it yeah. with them, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So we've got a handful of questions. Um, and you've probably covered them, yeah. but I'm going to read them out okay. for you anyway. Um, so, question regarding employees being informed about two possible specific contacts who've been trained to an acceptable level. Sorry, I'm smiling just because that is so much an ongoing process at the moment. Um, in the business for discussing their symptoms and what the business can do to support their requirements and or discuss their difficulties. That kind of goes back to what you said about size of the organisation. Yeah and their understanding yeah and i think menopause. you just if you haven't got a, a champion or whatever they call it in your workplace just go sometimes to... single single point of contact yeah, would you... be probably for the police force yeah i think you just go to the most sensible person that you can find that's in a position of responsibility and talk to them it's really good advice you know it's it's not It'd be lovely, wouldn't it, if everybody was trained and knew all about the menopause? Maybe yeah. in 20 years, That's 30 years. That's what we're calling a work in progress. Yes. Yeah. So I think probably the public sector have that or, or okay. developing that. But I just think go to the most sensible manager that you okay. can find. Um, I've got a question and I don't understand the question. So I'm going to read it out and you can explain. 
Is it really fair to use Bradford factor for menopause related absences? Although in menopause, the reason for absences can vary. One day off for joint pain this month, two day off for UTI the next. The root reason for these absences is menopause. And this particular person had to give up a job because of this. Sweet. So I don't know what the Bradford factor is. Okay, a bit of HR learning now. So the Bradford factor measures absence. Okay. And in theory, the theory is that short, frequent, unplanned absence has more disruption to a business than long-term sick because they can plan. Yeah, because they can plan. So yeah. what they do with the Bradford factor is, you know, you can have so many days off sick and then it's a trigger point, you have a meeting then you have so many more days sick and then you start to go down the disciplinary and okay. you can actually be terminated for doing it. Okay. However, we're back to the Equality Act here. I mean, I don't like the Bradford Factor. I hate it. I try and discourage my um, all my clients from using it because, uh, you know, like the lady said, with the menopause, everything is different, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if your company does use the Bradford Factor, when you're called into the meeting, I would explain... That all your symptoms are menopause related. Take Di's symptom checker yep. with you. Take the symptom checker. Um, show it to them and explain whoever's chairing the meeting. This is what it is. This is where we are. And come up with a plan. Um, and then you can say, you know, long term, the menopause is impacting on my day to day ability mm -hmm. to perform my job. So mm -hmm. therefore, I come under, the, you know, I could be covered under the Equality Act. We're yep. back to that lady um, with the second bit of case law where it was memory loss. So and this was else. in part one of in this, In part one, yeah. So, okay. And I would go into that meeting as well, prepared of, you know, this is it, aching joints, um, you know, hot flushes, whatever. This is the impact. This is why I have the time off. This is what you can do to help me. Because that way, if if you were to be dismissed, and oh, I do hope that people would look at your evidence and say, okay, fine. You could take a doctor's note in if you yep. want. You could take um, under the, um, it's not data protection anymore. Oh gosh, here we go. GDPR? Yeah. You can ask for a copy. <laughs> Good job we're together and it died. <laughs> brain um you can ask for a copy of your doctor's notes and you could take those in yes as well okay why not why not you don't so have it's all to, good evidence if you it? ask for them under the gdpr you don't have to pay for them is that right yes good tip i top don't know tip. good tip top tip okay so take those in and i i think then even if they you know ultimately if it does come to dismissal you've got a good case from fair dismissal i hope okay. it won't but you know at least you've covered yourself and you've got the evidence there. Okay, um, another question. Recently made redundant. Um, I'm a comm specialist with 20 plus years experience. The brain fog and memory issues have rendered me practically useless. I've just turned 47. I'm a single parent. I have to earn money. How the hell will I do that when I can't remember what I had for breakfast, let alone specific details of last week's strategy meeting? Well, I'm going to jump in here, first of all. And say the first thing would be to go and see your doctor mm. um, because those symptoms of brain fog, low mood, what you might describe as depression, loss of confidence, etc. That's all to do with a lack of estrogen because estrogen has such an effect on our brain health. Um, and on our emotions and on our moods. So the first thing to do is to go along and see your doctor and to talk about HRT and to get some factual evidence-based advice um, so that you really understand the benefits of HRT and that so you really understand what the newspapers will tell you are the downsides. But actually, in for most women, HRT is first-line treatment and it's safe. So that's the most important thing to know. Um, is there a downside? Um, there is a tiny, tiny risk factor, but we have to put it in context with quality of life and everything else that we do. So just jumping in from the sort of proactive medical side, but mm -hmm. what about from your perspective? I think look at your CV, again, back to the list, list your strengths. So, you know, apply for jobs where you know that you've got that skill set 
um, and that you're, you're strong at that. You could build your confidence by looking at online courses, ACAS, um, if you're in HR, ACAS have online training courses, Google it, do as much online as you can to get your confidence, Have you rewrite your CV, list your um, strengths, prepare for the interview, find out as much as you can about the company. Um, if you Google it, there are, I think it's on the Read website, um, that's Read Recruitment, there are standard interview questions, there's hundreds of them, okay. and it literally print them off and answer them all, so you're preparing yourself as much as you can for that interview. And obviously you have to do that on a good day, don't you? Yeah, do it on a good day. Yeah. Do it on a good day. Don't do it on a day when you're feeling really rubbish. No. No. Okay. Um, okay, so, um, oh, oh, this is interesting. Um, I think you answered this on the first part, but I'm going to ask you again. Um, this lady wants to know, what are her rights, her menopause rights, when she's working as a contractor? So you're protected for health and safety and um, in some cases discrimination, which is the harassment side of it. Look in the Equality Act, look on the ACAS website, Type in self-employed subcontractor and it comes up with all your rights. It's brilliant. Okay, brilliant. Mm -hmm. And last question is, should menopause be considered dis disability? The symptoms which have affected me most at work include brain fog and memory loss and certainly have impacted my career and work as much as a disability. And again, on part one, we talked about the definition of disability yeah if it substan substantially impacts your work or your life on a day-to-day -day basis then yes it can be considered a disability that's over a period of time over a period of time it? yeah so yes it could be okay over a period of time Brooke. but again we've spoken about how to deal with it in the workplace you know you're saying oh i've got brain fog etc etc it may be that you can do that list go see your manager adjust your adjust your work yeah all sorts of things that you can do so yeah, yeah. and just on the subject of reasonable adjustments mm. um is there you know kind of is there any onus on employers to make reasonable adjustments yes, yes. so um again in part one we spoke about um the two cases yeah that, that are in the public domain and yes an employer has to show that they've tried to make reasonable you know that they've made reasonable adjustments yeah but again if you're offering the solutions and your employer's not educated then hopefully they will be able to make those yeah and just picking up from this underneath that question there's another lady here who said i really agree about disability um i've been off work since april i've just been signed off again till october and i honestly don't think i could go back into a stressful working environment okay so the way to deal with that is if it is all menopause related again um, hopefully HR have been in touch they may not it depends how proactive mm -hmm. they are within yep. your business yep. can you go back on a phased return can you go in just for one or two hours can you have some work that you could get your confidence back with doing it at home mm -hmm. there's all sorts of ways to get you back to work because okay. you know if you've been if a com you've been with a company a while they've invested in you why yeah. on earth would they want to lose your expertise yeah because they're only going to have to find somebody else to find somebody else and, and train probably them. train that person and it's cost the business yeah yeah so, so Okay, so essentially the kind of the key themes are we desperately need to raise awareness. Yeah. Um, we definitely need more training in the workplace. Um, so if anybody wants to come and have a look at uh, menopausesupport.co.uk, that's my website. Um, you can find details there about the training that I do for organisations um, within the workplace. You can also find there the link to the Menopause Support Network, which is my private Facebook group. I think we've got about 9,000 members now. Um, and most importantly, you can find the petition, which is the hashtag Make Menopause Matter campaign. Um, the three aims are mandatory GP education, awareness and training in the workplace, guidance in the workplace, um, and also to have menopause included in the new RSE curriculum, which I'm delighted, not decided, see, menopause brain. <laughs> um, I'm delighted <laughs> to say we achieved on July the 4th. Um, so that is going to happen, which is absolutely fabulous. Um, if having watched either just this part or part one and part two, you think, well, actually, there's a question that I'd like to ask. Um, you can contact me through the Menopause Support Network 
or you can email via info at menopausesupport.co.uk. Um, Amanda doesn't currently have a website. She will have a website It's soon. going live in the next two weeks because my other website was um, sadly hacked. But I can send her your yeah. questions. Or I am on your Facebook Oh she's, on my, oh, she's and on my And I do reply, it's under Mandy Baldwin. If you put a question on there and tag me Mandy Baldwin or Perfect. DM me directly, happy to help as much don't as I DM can. Don't DM directly from the group because we don't allow that. Oh, don't you? Oh, she's sorry. not read the rules at all, I don't all, read the she? rules, I'm really bad. Okay, <laughs> put your question on the Facebook page. And, and tag inter- me. And tag Di. <laughs> no, no, tag, tag you, me. not me. Oh, <laughs> We need you a can tell it's now. Sunday. Sunday morning you? and it's early. Um, and I will endeavour to help as much as I can. Yeah, and if there's other stuff that you want to know, if, and you know, kind of you're tagging Mandy and we think that there's another vlog in this, there's part three, then I will drag her down to Buckinghamshire again mm-hmm. for another weekend and we'll do that for you. So um, thank you so much again. Not a problem. We've been promising to do this for about a year. <laughs> do, this, <laughs> sorry. do this on a Sunday morning. Yep. Um, so I hope it's been helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, drop us a note um, and let us know and let us know what else you'd like to know um, and we will try and help as much as we can. Okay, we will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.